the main reason this sort of crime is out of control is because a few years ago, quite a few years ago, um, a thief on two wheels were, was actually being chased by the police and he ended up, unfortunately, he ended up losing his life. So the police got in trouble because it was an unauthorised um, chase and then the new law came that actually the police can't chase these guys anymore. Now what happens when you do that? When the yeah. thieves know that they're not going to be chased, that's, that's it. Right, What are you doing to stop me becoming a victim? Please welcome Omar Marjan. In late 2015, Omar Marjan, who was 20 at the time, started up what would soon to become one of the most popular and fast growing pages in the motorbike blogging world. In an interview with the Metro, Omar said, I was getting attacked so much whilst doing deliveries, it started getting unbelievable. So I decided to buy a stab proof vest, a camera for my helmet, and I started to begin filming my shifts just in case something happened. I mentally went out every time on my bike as if I was going to war. The footage Omar collated and edited together in the early few months drew attention from hundreds of thousands of viewers around the world. Omar's life as a crime-fighting vigilante began as many original stories do with an attack. Just under six years ago, Omar was set upon by knife-wielding thieves in Hammerspiff. Filled with adrenaline and determination to protect himself and his bike he was riding, Omar was stabbed through the hand in the scuffle, but instead of running away, he stood and fought the thieves and chased them off. In an interview, Omar said, as a courier who spends 50 hours on the road a week, something's bound to happen to me every day. The thieves who stabbed his hand got away but after the incident Omar equipped himself with a GoPro for added protection. A few months after the stabbing he realised his new footage could have a different use. In another interview Omar goes on to say I saw how entertaining it was. London streets are crazy he said. With a pair of thermal handlebar gloves as his trademark look he created the YouTube account and became the Handmuff Warrior. My channel is so polarizing, he said. You either love or hate me depending on the video I put up. Most of Omar's videos show him chasing two wheel thieves through the streets of South Kensington or calling out motorists for traffic violations. In his second most popular video, Omar stumbles upon two bike thieves and manages to scare them off, preventing them from stealing someone's bike. Thieves. Pretty sure they're thieves. Yo, we up to? Yo, this guy's having his bike stolen. Yo, I've got you on camera. I've got you on camera. Machete, machete. No number play, South Kent.
When asked about this in an interview, Omar said, People get scared of cameras, and when the attacker got close and saw the red flashing light, I really do think that that was the reason he turned back. Although the fact Omar brandished a steel metal pipe at the thieves may have also had an impact on this. In an interview with Shortlist.com, Omar said, People say you're not making a difference, but I'm on the road so much that I think I am. In videos, he sorted thefts and confronted apparent drink drivers. I just tried to do it as safely as possible, he says. Not put anyone in danger or get a thrill out of it and just try not to be a dick. As Omar's channel grew in popularity, people started to complain about being featured in his videos. It's a pizza hot store. Bro, that's down to me. Yeah, that's down I'm to me. I'm asking you, you've got my face, look at it. Of course. Can you not put me on This is what I do, I record. Yeah, but I'm asking you, can you not. Don't matter how many times you ask. I'm not being rude or anything, I'm asking I'm not, you. I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude. Yeah, but, but I'm just asking for me, you nicely, bro. Can you not it don't matter how you ask. It don't matter how you ask. They have no power to force me to take it down, he says. But being the start of a Hamaf Warrior video can have real life consequences. In one video, Omar was boasting that he was able to get a van driver sacked after he was shown acting threateningly in a video. I don't want anyone to lose their jobs, Omar says. I hope nothing happens here. But then again, he should be following the rules. I can't go around censoring videos because someone's done something they shouldn't have. Omar started utilizing more and more social media to engage with his audiences. Oi, big man. How's it going? <laughs> hey, hey, real quick, I love what you do, but you're bad at it. He held drop-in live sessions on Instagram with thieves. This would act as a means for criminals who seamlessly couldn't help but be attracted to gloating about their ill-gotten gains on his large platform. But also for Omar to gather intricate details about the person he was hosting. On multiple occasions, thieves would unknowingly give away details that Omar and his group would pick up on and evaluate. This sometimes led to being able to identify a thief's location through their windows or stash spot from people recognizing street signs and landmarks. Life was busy for Omar. Tips would come flying in about motorbikes that had been spotted and dumped in rural areas. Messages from people who just had their bikes stolen asking for help and from the criminals he was trying to track down. Gangs of organized criminals often have easily impressed and expendable young men who do the majority of the repossessing work. It's these young men who felt the heat from Omar's targeting. It didn't take long for word to spread around the criminal underworld of the inconvenience how much videos were causing them. Early on, I recall having a brief interaction with Omar on Instagram after he'd contacted me about one of my motorbike crime videos. I remember telling him I'd highly recommend keeping his identity private and even offered him some basic counter surveillance tips for keeping safe. I was genuinely worried about his safety. The difference between us at the time was that when a criminal sympathizer watched one of my videos reporting on the latest moped thief being locked up and decided to make a death threat against me for talking about it, they were making it to someone whose identity was totally anonymous. When Omar made his videos, everyone knew exactly who he was. This meant that any little bit of public information with Omar's name and family name was open for thieves to examine. Just as Omar spent hours researching intel on thieves, they dug into his online data and tried to find out what they could about him. Despite having to move house twice while he lived in London because of security concerns, Omar carried on relentlessly hounding thieves. This caught the attention of national news outlets, radio stations and newspapers. There wasn't a person who owned a motorbike and had access to the internet at this point who didn't know who Hamoff Warrior was. Fans were delighted when Omar announced the decision to merge with Biker Biker, another group that was against bike theft and actively strove to reunite bikers with their stolen bikes. Together, they would conduct patrol in some of the most notorious hotspots in London for bike crime. This is arguably where his videos reach the next level of intensity. Groups of ordinary people join together in their spare time to meet up and ride in packs. Safety was in numbers for the riders as thieves often carried knives and tools such as angle grinders. Okay guys, we're on patrol. Uh, we're gonna turn it around now, see if you can see what we see. There we are. <laughs> Behind, 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 they're turning around, they're, they're spotted someone. Okay, turning around now, turning around now. Alright, I'm just done now anyway. It's kind of one ticket coming away. There you go.
This didn't seem to bother Omar or the biker biker group. They successfully located and reunited multiple stolen bikes and then naturally came a partnership with Knight's Recovery. They were able to then drop off the bikes back to the owner's address free of charge. Money wasn't becoming much of an issue at this point. Omar's video views ran into the hundreds of thousands per video with a few breaking through to the millions of views per video. YouTube paid out thousands of pounds and it must have felt like all the risk was worth the reward when he saw the cash hitting his bank account. In an interview, Omar once said, if the worst case scenario does happen, as long as I don't die, I've got a video out of it. Life as a vigilante was an occupational hazard for Omar. After being confronted by the machete wielding thief, he'd always wear a stab proof vest whilst riding. And at the time, injuries and deaths in the pursuits of likes were rapidly increasing. In March 2018, 20 year old Mona Lisa Perez was charged with manslaughter after fatally shooting her partner in a botched stunt in the hopes of going viral on the internet. And in July of the same year, three YouTubers from the extreme travel channel High On Life died after falling 30 meters from a waterfall. Omar seemed unfazed by the risks, claiming his only fear was being outnumbered by attackers. Everything's a win-win when you have a camera, he once boasted. If the worst case scenario does happen, as long as I don't die, I've got a video out of it. And if I ever got that in camera, it would be one of my biggest videos. To people on the outside, Omar was like Teflon. Nothing could touch him. He was surrounded by a strong, dedicated team, but behind the scenes, being the only face of an anonymous team meant the more successful unmaskings and recoveries they did, the more thieves started to target him. The guy on the T-Max must have gotten my number plate once again, this has happened in the past. And he posted this post, asking if anyone can give the address of a number plate. Now he said, I know where you live, I will burn your bike. Oh, I'm gonna blow your bike up, I'm gonna blow your bike up, I'm gonna blow your bike up, I know you fool. I'm a flurry of So why are you following him then? Who are you, to, who are you lot to follow him? By this point, daily death threats were a common thing. Omar couldn't upload a video, do an Instagram post, or make a live video without people commenting racially aggravated remarks and telling him if they ever saw him, they'd stab him. Omar's face very rarely showed any signs of reaction to this, but under the surface, it was all building up. After being the face of his war against bike crime for almost four solid years, the criminal underworld started to proactively hunt him back. Young boys on street corners would spot him, record his registration, and message a net of people to inform them of Omar's location and direction. There are spies everywhere that see me. Sometimes I look over my shoulder and there's a kid in a corner filming me. When I drive by, they pull on me. Oh, he snitch, he snitch, he snitch. Gangs wanted him dead. But this wasn't the only heat Omar had to deal with on the street. Omar's fiery temper sparked dramatic confrontations on the streets of London and his dangerous pursuits of thieves didn't escape the eyes of the police. It's not going to end, well. end well.